Let's try to solve this recurrence using the substitution method. The recurrence that we are given is T of n is T of the floor of n by 2 plus T of the ceiling of n by 2 plus 1. This is when n is greater than 1 and the base case of the recurrence is that for n equal to 0 and 1 the value of t is 1. So t of 0 and t of 1 are both 1. So how do we solve this using the substitution method? We have to first guess a reasonable solution. We have to first make a reasonable guess for the solution of t of n and then we need to prove that the guess is correct using mathematical induction. Before we look at how we come up with a reasonable guess, I just want to clarify in case you are not familiar with the ceiling operator that the ceiling of any number is the smallest integer that is greater than or equal to that number. Just as the floor of any number was the largest integer less than or equal to that number. In a similar way, the ceiling of any number is the smallest integer larger than or equal to that number. So for example, the floor of 2.5 is 2. The ceiling of 2.5 is 3. And if the number is a whole number, so let's say uh, you're taking the floor of 2 or let's say you're taking the ceiling of 2, the answer in either case is that number itself, which is 2. So having clarified what the ceiling operator means, let's now try to come up with a reasonable guess for what a solution to this recurrence could potentially look like. One way to come up with a guess for this is to assume that for large values of n, it's not going to make a difference whether or not we have these floor and ceiling operators inside the recurrence. So let's say this recurrence had been slightly different. Let's say that the right hand side here had been t of n by 2 plus t of n by 2 plus 1. In that case, we expect the solution to that modified recurrence to be not asymptotically different from the solution to this recurrence. Because after all, it's, it's just a presence or absence of the floor operator or, and the ceiling operator here. So why should that affect the overall asymptotic complexity? We don't expect that asymptotic complexity to be very different. So let's guess that the solution to this recurrence is going to be asymptotically the same as the solution to this modified recurrence, which we get by just ignoring the floor and ceiling operators. So we get twice of t of n by 2 plus 1 on the right hand side by pulling out these operators. Now this recurrence is a simpler recurrence. We can solve this using the master method. So A here is 2, B is 2, right? this is A, this is B, and F of M is 1. So if we compute n to the power log base B of A, that's going to be equal to n to the power log base 2 of 2, which is n. So if we compare n to the power log base b of a with f of n, we find that n to the power log base b of a is polynomially larger than f of n. This means that we are in case 1 of master method. So by case 1 of master method or master theorem, 
we can say that t of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a or theta of n. So this is the solution to this recurrence and we expect that the solution to this recurrence is also going to be theta of n. Let's try to prove that using the substitution method. We will divide this claim into two parts. First we will claim and prove that t of n is in big O of n and then in the second part we will prove that t of n is in big omega of n and having proven that t of n is in both big O of n and big omega of n we would have proven that t of n is in theta of n. So let's first focus on proving that t of n is big O of n. So we are going to assume that our guess is big O of n. Our guess for the upper bound here is big O of n. And we are going to try and prove this formally using induction. That is, we are going to try and prove formally that T of n is big O of n, which translates to the following. This is from the definition of the big O notation. We need to prove formally by induction that there exists a positive constant C such that for all values of n larger than or equal to some positive threshold n naught, T of n is bounded from above by a constant multiple of n. So we are proving the upper bound here or we are going to prove the upper bound here. So let's start by proving the base cases. Let's start with n equal to 1. Is T of 1 less than or equal to C times 1? Well, we are given that t of 1 is equal to 1. So, t of 1, the left hand side is equal to 1. The right hand side here is c times 1. So, when will this inequality hold? This inequality will hold if the value of c is greater than or equal to 1. Let's look at the next base case, t of 2. What is t of 2? From the right hand side, if we substitute n equal to 2 throughout, we'll get t of 2 is t of 1 plus t of 1 plus 1. So from the right hand side, we get t of 2 is twice of t of 1 plus 1 and t of 1 is given to be equal to 1. So twice of t of 1 plus 1 will be 3. So t of 2 is 3. So the left hand side here t of 2 is known to be 3 and 3 will be less than or equal to c times 2 if c is chosen to be greater than or equal to 3 by 2 or 1.5. So assuming that we choose a value of c that satisfies both these constraints, this claim will be true at n equal to 1 and at n equal to 2. So what will be our induction hypothesis? Having proven the base case, let's assume that the claim holds in general for values of k varying from 1 to n minus 1. That is, let's assume that t of k is less than or equal to c times k for k varying from 1 to n minus 1. So for all values of k less than n, 
We are saying that this claim holds and we are going to prove that it holds at n as well. So these two of course were our base, case, base cases and let's see if we need to prove any more base cases. We'll see that as we uh, go through the proof for the induction step. So assuming the induction hypothesis, let's try to prove that the claim holds at n as well, assuming that it holds for values of the argument less than n up to n minus 1.